Welcome back on LHSN. We're going to kick off this broadcast a little bit differently by recognizing the 2022 NCEA single discipline national champions in our Lynchburg equestrian team. We're going to let sports information director Mark Robertson take it away. Certainly a very special moment for our equestrian team here at Lynchburg, capturing once again the single discipline national championship back in 2022. It's past academic year, first national championship since women's soccer won back in the early 2010s. But now we're going to turn our attention to the basketball court because we got a really important ODAT game coming up between Lynchburg and Farum, second half of our double header. I, once again, I am Sam Graham alongside Andrew Watson, and we're going to jump right into things. Andrew, just give us a quick preview of what's to come before we jump into lineups. Yeah, these two teams already met once this year. Farum took that win at Farum, so a very important matchup. Obviously, we know where Lynchburg sits in the standings on the outside looking in of that top 10, but in order for Lynchburg to get a win today, last time these two teams met, they dominated the offensive glass. They didn't, it didn't translate to a win at that point, but if they can continue that today, it's definitely something to build from. They also need to get out and transition a little bit better. When they did that on their home floor a couple games ago against Randolph, they looked like a completely different team. And just the momentum was different in this building. And we're going to have a big crowd here tonight. And then for Farum, they need to manage the runs. Last time these two teams met, it was a game of runs. Farum got out hot. Lynchburg came right back, and Farum punched him in the mouth. And Lynchburg not able to come back, but we know that Lynchburg is a little bit better coming out of breaks than they were when they met the first time. And for Farum, obviously, they need to counter those offensive rebounds for the Hornets. Well, I think that pretty much covers everything. Lynchburg, incredibly crucial game for the Odak Standings. Farum on the other side can clinch a postseason berth with a win here tonight, but road wins never come easy. We're going to jump into our starting lineups for tonight's game. First, for the visiting Farum Panthers, going to be Deshaun Hicks, over 21 points a game. He's going to kick things off there for Farum. He will be joined by Aiden Gamble, sophomore guard out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Then it will be Tali Odin, the third guard in this Farum starting five. And rounding it out will be Alfredo Abel Rivera, the freshman forward, averaging right around three points a game. And then Calvin Washington, 18.4 points a contest coming into tonight. 
He will be the big down low for Ferrum. And on the Lynchburg side of things, it'll be Kavon James joined by Alex Fitch. Oh boy, has Fitch been hot as of late, especially here at home. Then it'll be Miles Taylor, the do-it-all wing for the Hornets, and their starting five will be rounded out by the defensive stud down low, Jalen Hargrove, and the standout freshman in Pearson Young. Yeah, Ferrum has a lot of very good players on their side. Obviously, you talked about Deshaun Hicks, 21.1 points per game. He also leads the team with 97 total assists, just three shy of 100. So you got to look for that. Last time these two teams met, it was a battle of assists. Almost every single basket in those matchup, or sorry, in that matchup was off of an assist. And then obviously for Lynchburg, without a, key, a few key guys here tonight, I think Jason Easton is not dressed and have not seen Elijah Davis either. But Either way, both teams know the importance of this game. Farum looking to find their way into the ODAC tournament, cement their spot. So Lynchburg potentially giving up a little bit of their depth. Might give us a chance to see some of these younger guys, like a Cole Murphy. We don't get to see a ton. Three goes up quickly from Alex Fitch. Lynchburg able to corral the offensive rebound. That's Pearson Young. Reset with Miles Taylor, who stumbles a bit on the take. Lynchburg resets again. Kavon James, top of the key, down low. Hargrove looking to drive. That's a good job defensively. There from Abel Rivera, keeping him out of the restricted area, though he does ultimately give up the foul, send Hargrove to the line where he struggled a bit this season. Hey, maybe we're seeing something early from the Hornets trying to get the ball inside and really play into those offensive rebounds. If you're taking three-pointers, obviously it did end up with a long rebound there, but if you can get numbers in the paint and just trying to force force Farum to play defense and maybe even foul you on a drive right there, definitely going to be a positive sign for the Hornets. 64.5% on the season for Hargrove, who's seen his role increase a bit second half of the season. Goes two for two there, though. A couple big free throws early, and Lynchburg out to early lead. Plenty of energy on the Lynchburg side of things. They're going to need it to combat, particularly the main two Ferrum studs in Washington and Hicks. Hicks with the ball now. Little runner rolls all around the rim and out. Once again, Lynchburg wants to run. Andrew, this is looking like the Mary Washington game so far. Yes, it is, but in the first half, they played really well in that game. And one more thing I wanted to point out was the bench points from these last meeting between these two teams. Miles Taylor, good shot there, getting him off to a hot start. But last time these two teams met, 47 bench points for the Hornets, only five for the Panthers. So Lynchburg giving up a little bit of depth tonight. Obviously, a couple players not in, on, the, on the roster for him, but definitely going to be something to look at going forward if you're a Farum fan. Corner three off from Odin. May have drawn iron, not sure. Nonetheless, Fitch three, dead on, dead eye. Alex Fitch continues his hot streak. First triple of the game, and Lynchburg out to an early 7-0 lead. It's what we mentioned earlier. Getting out to a hot start is something that's very important for the Hornets, and the Panthers are going to figure out a way to stop this run. It's going to be extra important to get out to a hot start because not only are those two main guys we've highlighted for Farum as Pearson Young takes his shot at a three, not only are they elite in terms of production, but also leaders and guys that have been around. Hicks, a senior, Washington, a junior. So you're not going to rattle them with a 7-0 run in the first two and a half minutes. you got to keep up this energy as long as possible. Young takes a little bump. Now a shot. Goes up from Odin once again. He leaves it a little short. Tough start for Odin. And Taylor trying to thread the needle to Hargrove, who ultimately turns it over. Farum will look to slow it down a bit. Here's Hicks. Everything will run through him on offense. Another take to the bucket. Those are all shots in his wheelhouse. Can score from virtually anywhere on the floor. 0 of 2 start today as Lynchburg turns it over in the same spot. Yeah, not something you want to see. Obviously, getting out in transition is a positive thing for the Hornets, but if they're going to do it a little bit uncontrollably there, two turnovers in a row, it's definitely going to play in the favor of Farum since they do like to play in the half court, and they're a little bit better than Lynchburg is in that area. About that quick release from Washington, but the cold start for Farum continues. James looking to add to the Lynchburg lead, can't connect. 
There's another three going up for the Hornets. So early on, all about the three-point shot for Lynchburg and all about a cold start 0 for 6 out of the gates for Ferrum. James guarding Hicks close, passes out, open shot, Washington and Ferrum on the board. Picture perfect offensive possession. Takes the lid off the bucket for the Panthers. Yeah, Washington, as you said, an 18 points per game score. So one of those two guys for Ferrum that they're gonna look to tonight, but maybe someone else can step up. Maybe Abel Rivera is gonna find a way to score for this team. He might have a little bit of an advantage in the paint for the Panthers. Understand Abel Rivera went to the rival high school of you, Andrew. A little bit of a connection there. Yeah, and I'm hoping that I mean, obviously we're on opposite sides today. I mean, you want them to play well, but at the same time, I hope it's not the same results that I always saw in high school. Goes Ferrum after forcing the defensive stop. They go to Washington again in close. Good grief, how much of an athlete is Calvin Washington? I know that shot doesn't drop, but the acrobatics in midair gives his best attempt at it. He's gonna be rewarded with two free throws. Yeah, and good defense for the most part. Just did a really good job of flipping that screen to the top of the key to get it inside. And then tough to play defense, especially with a guy with that size. And if you're Alex Fitch, you were behind him. Tough to make a play on that ball. But great move there from Washington. And obviously, Farum knows where they're going to try and go with the ball here in the early couple minutes. Hicks playing more of the orchestrating role, though he has put up two shots so far. Changing things up a bit on these last couple possessions. Is Washington the desired target? Goes one for two at the line, however. And it's a 7-3 Lynchburg lead, 15-26 remaining in the first half. Yeah, Lynchburg got out to a hot start, got up 7-0. Since then, it's been all fair. Obviously, they've only scored three points. James trying to change that. But we talk about how they get out to a good run, but recently we've seen them start out hot and then just kind of struggle for the next couple of minutes before that run starts picking up again. Yeah, and by no means do you hate that shot, you know, from Kevon James. Believe he scored 11 last game out. So, you know, kind of a streaky player in James. Always gives you really quality defensive possessions, and he is going to be tested today going up against Deshaun Hicks. So you don't hate that shot from James, though. Caught it in rhythm right there at the line. Just can't connect. Ball swings back. Calvin Washington, tough fadeaway jumper. So three straight possessions with a Calvin Washington shot. May have made that one a little harder than it needed to be. Crossover, step back, Miles Taylor left off. James takes a poke from behind from Hicks. Ball ends up with Taylor. Tough take, he finishes in close. He's gotten a lot better in close to the rim as of late. It's gonna draw a Ferrum timeout, Fitch. Hit the floor there, but seems to be okay. May have just twisted his ankle. But let's break down these first couple minutes. Got five and a half in the books. 14.36 remaining first half. Lynchburg out to a 9-3 lead. Whew, get us a chance to catch our breath. Yeah, Farum came out and it looked like they kind of got the shots they wanted, but maybe just forcing them up a little bit, not in rhythm like you usually see. And then Lynchburg, they came out firing, knocking down a couple of buckets early, got up to seven nothing. And then since then, the offense has really slowed down on either side. Obviously, Farum did get their first three points courtesy of Calvin Washington. But I mean, for Lynchburg, I think getting out in transition is a good thing, but you have to do it controlled. And I think that's what Coach Hillary Scott talked about earlier in the year is that it's a brand of basketball that everyone loves. You love people running up and down the court and just playing quick, but sometimes it is a hindrance to taking good shots, and we've seen them struggle in that situation, especially when they get up and start to realize maybe they're feeling it a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the goal is to win basketball games, right? And even if it's not always the most pretty you know, thing in the world, do what needs to be done. How about some pretty good defense there from Trey Pittman? He's subbed in and is now tasked with guarding Washington. <laughs> Ball again swings to Washington, noticing a bit of a trend here. Kuda Savage also checking in for the Hornets. He'll spell Kavon James. Yeah, last time these two teams met, Trey Pittman had 16 points, 11 rebounds. His, I believe, his second double-double of the year. And that was in that month where Trey Pittman looked like he was the star in the ODAC. I mean, he was putting up 
insane numbers. He matched his career high and then topped his career high two more times in the same month. And maybe Trey Pittman trying to build off the energy of playing Farum and just restart that as they try and make that push towards the end of the season. Yeah, it's an uphill battle here, if, if, if we're being frank, for Lynchburg to push its way into the ODAC tournament after losing that game. That was a heartbreaker to Shenandoah that you were on the call for, Andrew, coming down to that final shot. So got to hope Trey Pittman can find a little bit of a, you know, some confidence, maybe something he likes against this fair matchup, get himself rolling as well as the team as we get into March. Empty possession for Lynchburg. There's a block from Fitch. Mentioned the athletes already. They're everywhere on the floor. Here's a rhythm three corner. That would have been Fitch's second, but he leaves it a little short. Washington ahead, corrals that pass. Adjusts in midair once again and lays it in ever so softly. Yeah, and Farum might need someone else to step up here. Calvin Washington doing it all, all six points for Farum in these first six minutes. So not sure who's going to step up. Obviously, we talked about how the starters for this team are really the stars. It's Taylor's called for a travel there, but I mean, 47 points off the bench for the Hornets last time these two teams met. Only five for Farum. So they're going to need to figure out a way to change that as we keep going forward in this matchup. Well, that takes us to our first media timeout of the evening. We will take it with them by telling you our score, Lynchburg 9, Farum 6, 13-15 to go, first half. My name is Sarah Watts, and I am a computer science major. I chose to play softball at the University of Lynchburg because I came to friendlies and camps, and the team and the coaches were so welcoming, and I just, after that, I knew this was the place for me. The University of Lynchburg has helped me achieve goals because through my classes, I do a group project, and I think that will prepare me for my job when I need to work with people. The person that has the most influence in my life would be my parents because throughout my softball career they have done nothing but support me and when I have bad games they always pick me up and they're always a piece Welcome back inside Turner Gymnasium. Take a quick look there at Patrick Corrigan at the helm of this Ferrum team in his first year. So getting a win today, clinching a trip to the ODAC tournament, that's a huge building block for a first year head coach. And man, to come in and you know, have some players like Deshaun Hicks, Calvin Washington, just athletes everywhere. It's not a bad place to start off. Yeah, Bell Rivera unable to convert on that. But to your point, both of these head coaches were both stars in the ODAC. Obviously, head coach Hillary Scott at Roanoke. And Corrigan was at Hampton Sydney when they did win the regular season title in 2013. So experienced coaches, experienced players in their own right in this conference. Impressive play down low by Washington, working along the baseline, able to strip that ball away from Pearson Young, though it is last touched by Farum, Washington with all six of Farum's points early. And there is a block. That's a tough shot to block. Aiden Gamble lifts off to alter that shot from Pearson Young. But once again, we just get a reset. No harm, no foul. Kuda Savage once again. The inbounds pass this time just from a little further out. Ball swings back to Savage. Took a look at the rim. Now looks to drive. Crafty take corralled there by Young. Good take by Jordan Parham. And Hornets first to double figures. Jordan Parham, his first bucket of the game. Yeah, Jordan Parham, a guy we haven't seen or we did not see much in the middle of the season, has kind of stepped up in this new role off the bench. Farum responds immediately with a three there, but I mean, a lot of guys on the court right now for the Hornets who have been on a little bit of a resurgence tour, Fitch, Savage, and Parham, so definitely a different mindset for him. 
Tough take there from Savage, but the rebound and putback, good from Pittman. Like you were talking about, that looks a lot like what we saw from Pittman there, you know, late December, early January. Yeah, and maybe that's just that Ferrum defense giving him that offensive rebound back to where he's comfortable. He had 11 offensive rebounds in a couple, or a game a couple weeks back. That was his career high at 18 rebounds. So he knows that he can get those rebounds, and Ferrum definitely giving him the opportunity thus far. Tough take from Abel Rivera. Gives a little bump to Pearson Young, but unable to finish in close. Still no, only one substitution for Farham so far. Johnny Franklin is checked in. Meanwhile, Jordan Parham, back-to-back -back possessions, getting himself going. Opens up a six-point Lynchburg lead, but missed it a few possessions ago. Deshaun Hicks knocking in that straight-on three. You don't want to see that guy start to get cooking if you're Hillary Scott. This Lynchburg bench is, he gets one in close again there. Yeah, Hicks is a definitely a threat on the offensive end. 21 points per game is extremely impressive at any level, especially when you can do it for this Ferrum squad. So not a welcome sight for the Hornets if he's going to start knocking those down, especially if they're contested. Another offensive rebound put back attempt from Pittman, no good does draw the second foul on Alfredo Abel Rivera. And we'll get our couple more substitutions on the Ferrum side of things. It's two shots for Pittman, good on the first. Very capable score really from anywhere inside the three point line, even stretches out past there from time to time. Struggles a bit at the free throw line. Just 45.7% on the season. So Odin's checked back into the game for Farum. Here's Hicks working once again against James. It's the backdoor cut, then picked off by James. Now an open three. Bit of a wild sequence there. Lynchburg ultimately able to reset. Was going to say in the half court, but what a find there from Jordan Parham. Threads the needle to Miles Taylor, and the Hornets back up by eight. Yeah, Miles Taylor already up to six points, and he's done it by getting downhill and just showing that he has the handles to get inside, even as a guy who's not undersized in this game, but he isn't Trey Pittman playing in that position. So definitely a good sight for the Hornets in the early going. And a three from Kuda Savage. He's struggled a little bit overall this season from deep, but he's picked it up a bit just in his overall level of play in the last couple weeks. Been in and out of the lineup with injury, illness, whatnot, but he's gotten it cooking a little bit lately. Yeah, ever since that Shenandoah game where he had 17, I felt like we've seen a different player. We talked about how he doesn't shoot the three ball all that much, not even all that well, and yet it seems like every time he's taken one down the stretch, it's going in, especially when they were on the road at Roanoke. They fell in that game, however, but I mean, positive signs for the Hornets are all over this court. A lot of people rising up, maybe realizing we're getting towards the end of our career. A lot of seniors on this squad, especially in the starting lineup tonight, so they don't want to see their season end in the next couple of weeks. They want to keep it going in the ODAC tournament. No, certainly not. Lynchburg doubling up the Panthers here early, 940 to go in the first half. Lynchburg leading 22 to 11. And yeah, it seems like that, you know, coming off the bench just seems to serve guys like Kuda Savage and Jordan Parham a little bit better. It's like, when I mean, you think about like a Manu Ginobili in the NBA, just some of those guys that just prefer to be the sixth man, seventh man, kind of let the game settle into its rhythm. And then you come in and give whatever boost you have with some fresh legs. And a lot of that might be the other side preparing for those starting lineups and just seeing, okay, well, if Parham's going to come off the bench, we're not going to worry about him as much in our defensive lineup. But obviously you've seen it thus far. He's got four points. He's gotten downhill, and he's created a lot for other guys. Obviously that assist there to Miles Taylor in transition. So, I mean, guys stepping into different roles than what we initially thought they were going to have at the beginning of the year. And although things aren't looking great for the Hornets in terms of their record and how they've been playing recently. I mean, things are settling in and the brand of basketball they're playing is something that Coach Hillary Scott is very happy with. It's 
Get back set down on the court. Odin be the inbounds man here. Schberg won't put anyone up on him. Goes in to Hicks. Jamar Butler also checked into the game for Farum. Once again, they go Washington. Has his pocket picked by Savage. Mishandled the dribble a little bit. Might have cost Lynchburg a run. But they do force the turnover. Parham sets up half court. Savage works to Pittman. Washington forces him out to the three-point line. Pump fake from Taylor creates some space, but and he will travel. Been a bit of a common issue for this Lynchburg team this season. It's those unforced errors that you, know, you really just hate. Yeah, definitely a tough one there. It looked like they had a set play to get Parham a shot there from the baseline. Obviously running that little floppy set, trying to figure out which way he was going to go. Well defended by Farum, especially to force Miles Taylor on that move and not easy not to travel if there's three Farum defenders around you. Hornet sticking in man. James forces the turnover and Pittman turns it into two points in close. Got to be liking what you're seeing from Trey Pittman in the early part of this one. Farum trailing by 13. Washington's gone a bit cold. And James has made life very tough on Hicks. So who rises up to the occasion when it comes to some of the reserves and role players for this Farum team? They're going to have to figure it out quick because Jordan Parham is cooking offensively. He's got seven to lead all scores for Lynchburg. And the environment in this building just seems different than what it has in different games. Everyone knows the importance, especially the Hornets. I mean, you see it on the offensive end, the de defensive end with another steal, and James, a three in transition, not able to convert. But I mean, this team, it just has a different feeling about them right now. And especially Farum, not used to playing in an environment where many people are there. Obviously, when Lynchburg went on the road, 75 fans in attendance. I would say there's 75 fans in three rows sitting right below us up here. So a different environment, trying to get settled, but 16 points down in the first half is not easy to come back from. Pittman gives up the little check foul against Washington, going to earn him a trip to the bench as Hargrove checks in in his place. Farum got to find something here. Lynchburg, active hands by everybody. How about Kavon James? His defense just matching up with whoever the top guard is for whatever team you're playing. It's earned him a lot more minutes, a lot more time in the rotation, and he's just completely risen to the occasion. Hats off to James. And it's crazy because every game we talk about how important he was, and yet you look up at the scoreboard and he has two points, but what that doesn't account for is the team points that are basically as a direct result of his defensive effort. And he's been definitely a welcome help for the Hornets. Jordan Parham, nine, Farum, 11. 7 10 to go in the first half. Parham has found his shot, cannot miss. Where does Farum go offensively? Lynchburg remaining in man. Farum patient around the perimeter. Works inside, comes back out. And that shot off the mark as well, off the fingers of Jamar Butler. See where Lynchburg goes with this possession. If they try to keep it with Parham, no, they go inside with Hargrove. Has his shot blocked from Calvin Washington, who has made life difficult down low for Lynchburg. Hicks on the other side. He's got seven. Cuts the deficit to 16. Yeah, important to note that every single point for Farham has come from their two stars, Calvin Washington and Hicks. So. I mean, we talked about it before. Who is it going to come from? Who's going to step up? And right now it looks like Farum's just trying to find one guy. They've been trying to get Kavon James going offensively. He's gotten some really, really quality looks. Buries that one, kind of daring Farum to guard him a little tighter and take some eyes off maybe a Jordan Parham or a Trey Pittman. Definitely tough to guard all, all five guys if they're scoring at the clip they are. So Farum in a little bit of a trouble troubling spot. Get a foul on the floor there. 
Washington kicked that play into motion. He's just so quick off the dribble. He's a deceiving six foot six. He's so long. And you throw in the athleticism and just a really, really tough matchup. But early on in this one, he just hasn't quite had that shot. Two for six early on. Got Farum going offensively, but he's quieted down. And it's a 32-13 start for Lynchburg. You really can't ask for much more. You know, we talked about how they needed to get out to a hot start, but I mean, their hot start didn't come on the offensive end. It's shown on the defensive end. 32 points, not something that's out of the regular for this team recently, but 13 on the defensive end is definitely a positive thing. Foul's going to go against Fitch. He doesn't seem too happy about it, but Andrew, I think I might have heard the slap from up here on the wrist of Calvin Washington. Maybe more angry with himself, knowing that Washington did pick up his dribble there and he didn't really have to foul him or if he was going to make him take a really tough shot but it doesn't lead to free throws and Jalen Hargrove is going to be called for another foul there but I mean good defense comes with pressure and it comes with kind of riding that line between fouling and playing straight up good defense it's tough to find that balance between those two. That was Hargrove's third foul Surprised that this won't draw us our second media timeout. But we will stay here until it does. Collision between James and Hicks. Looks like everybody's okay. Ball should remain with Ferrum. Yeah, three quick fouls there from the Hornets. We talked about, I mean, I said it on the first one there about how it didn't put them at the free throw line, but now they're sitting at the line in a one and one. And the best thing you can do if you're Ferrum is get to the free throw line, especially, I mean, it stops the clock. It lets you get kind of set and just kind of relax. Ferrum, not the best at shooting free throws in the conference, sitting at 10th. But still, I mean, everyone at this level can make a free throw regardless of who you are, because you're here for a reason. Hicks, the seventh free throw of the game for Farum. Definitely going to want as many of those easy ones as you can get. He makes the first. Does lead Farum in the scoring column. Really a very solid first half from Hicks. He's orchestrated well, hasn't really turned the ball over too much. 50% from the floor. He's got eight points, but needs somebody to step up and help him. As Calvin Washington's having a bit of a tough time last couple possessions. Yeah, and something interesting, Lynchburg has already played 10 guys. We see Makovic in the game as well as Walker, I believe. So, I mean, it's a lot of different guys stepping up, a lot of different guys that Hillary Scott trusts. Well, Kavon James thought about that three, wisely passes out of it. And Miles Taylor, so good at creating for himself, does so along the baseline. And I'm not sure that the Hornets can miss as of right now. Hicks, strong take on the other end, essentially goes coast to coast. So he's found his game in the latter half of this first period, but where's the help coming from? Three off the mark from Jaden Walker. Going to get to see, like we mentioned, top of the broadcast, some of the more young pieces for this Lynchburg team with the absences of Easton, who is a freshman himself, and Elijah Davis. Hicks, two more. So he looks to be on a mission to match that 21 point per game mark in the first half here. Yeah, the issue for him is he's gonna need a teammate to step up for him, especially, I mean, he's not gonna win the game on his own as Makovic, great move inside there, stepping in that role that Jalen Hargrove was filling. And I mean, Farum just struggling to get a couple stops right now, but I mean, definitely a positive sign for the Hornets. Yeah, great move, gets Butler in the air. Makovic able to finish, draws our second media timeout. We will take it with him by telling you our score. Lynchburg 36, Barrow 19.
John Hicks at safety. Maybe it's just a little bit more. Welcome back inside Turner Gymnasium. Pivotal ODAC matchup here. Just four games remaining in the ODAC slate for Lynchburg. After dropping that tough one to Shenandoah last week, this one takes on a little bit of extra meaning. And you know, I think the last two games, even though they resulted in losses for the Hornets, they found so many positive things and definitely showing that here tonight. Farum goes corner to Jamar Butler, but he runs into three Hornets trying to drive the baseline, picks up his dribble and travels. So an unforced error on the Farum side. Surprising just the sixth turnover of the game so far for Farum, it feels like it should be 10 or 11. But they really haven't hurt themselves so far. It's just mainly been hustle plays and steals on the Lynchburg side of things. Foul will go against Aiden Gamble there, his first. Only the third team foul against Farum. So they're in good shape in that department. Miles Taylor looking for somewhere to go with it. Once again, Kavon James wide open from beyond the arc. And you want to say, I mean, if Barham's going to continue to, to give him those kinds of looks, he's going to start cashing in on him. He, he's capable of shooting the three, now two of five after missing his first three. Yeah, and there's not a guard on the floor right now on either side that's going to miss many open threes, as you see right there. Aaron finding that three-pointer right back. But, I mean, you can't leave anyone open at this level, especially in rhythm like both of those two shots were. So definitely something that both teams need to pick up on a little bit. Yep, number three for Farum and Aiden Gamble responding to number three, Kevon James's triple. So everything coming up three is the last couple possessions. But for Farum now, you got to buckle down defensively, try and get this thing under 10. Just make it a little bit more manageable, if nothing else, mentally. It's there, Miles Taylor. There's an unforced error. Got caught in the air, nowhere to go. Bit of a break for Farum. But now you got to go make something happen with it on the offensive end. As Kuda Savage will spell Kavon James, and Fitch comes in for Miles Taylor. Yeah, Farum has had a couple of good defensive possessions in a row there. Obviously, the bucket leading to that Kavon James three, but. Other than that, they've looked relatively decent ever since this lead has climbed up. They've just not been able to have that offensive spark to really climb themselves back into this game to this point. Back to the corner of the ball swings with Gamble. Now it goes inside. And Johnny Franklin able to finish in close little finger roll. Farum cuts into this deficit, now just 15. Deep three, Kuda Savage. Second triple of the evening. Everything is falling for the team in white. Six points for Savage. And it's coming from a lot of different places. Almost everyone on this team who's made an appearance tonight has scored. Has another immediate response there from Hicks. He's up to 16 points on the night, five shy of his season average. And I mean, for Farum, yes, it's positive you made that three, but you can't be trading points in possessions like that, especially if you're going to climb your way back in. It's going to start on the defensive end if you're a Panthers fan. Yeah, and for Lynchburg, I mean, we touched on Kuda Savage and Jordan Parham each coming off the bench and the you know potential pros and cons of that, how it pertains to each team. But you got to imagine Farum wasn't expecting that those two guys would come out and just absolutely light the world on fire. But that's exactly what they've done. I mean, they're putting the pressure on with some of these, you know, more role players. Of course, for Lynchburg, as we've kind of progressed through this season, still haven't really seen a, you know, one dominant guy. You know, it's kind of changed at times. At one point, it was Pearson Young. At another, Trey Pittman. Miles Taylor's been solid throughout. But Hornets yet to have that, that one dominant score. But... That's kind of what Hillary Scott expected at the beginning of the year when we talked with him. Yeah, maybe, I mean, that's a positive thing sometimes to be spreading the wealth across your team, but when you need a basket, not just relying on, you know, someone to step up, knowing you have a guy is definitely an important fact, but the fact that in this game, it seems like everyone is stepping up knowing the importance. It 
you could go literally anywhere for this Lynchburg team. Kuda Savage, ball on a string, gets in right where he wants to be, but can't finish close to the bucket. Potential break for Farum. Ball goes to Hicks, and what a half for Deshaun Hicks. He's cut the Lynchburg lead down to just 13. So now all of a sudden you blink, and getting this deficit down to 10 or under is a very real possibility for Farum with 49 seconds left in the half. Aura may have settled for that shot a bit, but thanks to the hustle of Kuda Savage, Lynchburg's going to retain possession. Yeah, and to your point about just kind of catching that momentum as they go into half, I mean, with a couple of dominant scores like Farum has, all it takes is two or three shots and you're back in the game as Kuda tries to play it off the back of a Farum defender, sorry, defender there. We saw him do that earlier in the year against Shenandoah. I mean, a little bit of trickery from him there, but if you're Farum, you're just trying to get a stop. You're trying to go down and get a basket, cut this lead, 10, 11 points, even if you get at the free throw line and just get one. I mean, it goes such a long way. If you come out with a little bit of a run, I mean, the momentum is completely in the away team's hands at that point. Absolutely, back to that savage point. This is his first game this season, knocking in two triples. Pearson Young pushes the lead back out to 15, 30 seconds remaining in the half. And Savage now four of six from beyond the arc his last three games. Yeah, definitely picking it up on the offensive end for Savage. So 15 seconds left, about one second separating shot and game clock. Hicks in no hurry. Have to imagine this final shot probably drawn up for him. He'll take one just inside the right wing of the Hornet logo. Pearson Young at the horn. Jaws front iron. He was ready for that one. As soon as he saw that shot go off from Hicks, bolted to the right wing. Ball makes its way to him and high arcing shot. Ne nearly took out a light here inside Turner Gym, but that will take us to the end of our first half here. Everything going Lynchburg's way so far. 44 for Lynchburg, Farum, 29. to come to University of Lynchburg because first of all the golf program was new and it was starting up so I was really intrigued by that idea and then the class sizes here are also really similar to what I had in high school and that was really good for me because it meant I would have a good relationship with my professor so when I did have to miss for golf the professor knew me and being able to make up the work would be easier than if I went to a bigger school. What I like about the campus is walking around, everyone's just friendly in general. So first of all, it's a beautiful campus, but everyone around here is smiling and they're having fun. And it just has a really homey feel that is something that I really enjoy. What I liked about the athletic department here is the facilities are really nice. We have an indoor facility that is designated for us. And then what something else that I really enjoyed is the coaches and the athletic directors are very involved in players' school and just golf in general. So it's nice knowing that you have a community around you to help you if you need help. Everyone has a story, a triumph, a time they fell short, a gift, 
a light all their own. Every story has a beginning. For us, our stories began long before we got here, at the moment we discovered we had something to share with the world. But no matter where we've been, our journeys weave together at the University of Lynchburg. Since 1903, we've grown from a handful of students to a diverse, dynamic community of students, professors, staff, and alumni around the world. In a community that supports who we are and who we want to be, we're on a journey to find where our passions lead so we can lead others to find theirs. Together, we have more experience, we have more knowledge than we do alone. Eventually, our stories will lead us to a path all our own, and we will share our passions with the world. No matter the journey we choose, the University of Lynchburg is, and always will be, our home. My name is Jen Hyde. Um, I graduated in 2018 and I got my major in philosophy, political science, and I minored in human services. And uh, career wise, right now I work at a residential treatment center for um, juveniles with sexually reactive behaviors. I would say the biggest advantage is definitely um, that it is a small campus. You know, you get to um, have that one-on-one -on -one with your professors. They're willing to help you out. They're going to get to know you more than just a student that they're teaching. You know, they really invest into your lives. Definitely use every resource that you can kind of get at Lynchburg. Um, there's tons of mentors within the professors, the faculty, the staff here, your peers that are here. You have so many options that you can take. There's so many classes, you know, even if it's not within your major, if there's a class you're interested in, take it. Um, kind of explore your options because Lynchburg does have such a wide variety of different things that you can do. Um, you know, be involved, become a well-rounded individual um, because Lynchburg sets up the support to where you can do that here. Thomas Gibson Hobbs graduated from Virginia Christian College in 1904 as a member of its first graduating class. After earning a law degree from the University of Virginia, he settled in Lynchburg and began a highly successful career as an attorney. In January of 1915, he was invited to attend a meeting of the College Board of Trustees, during which the possibility of closing the college due to financial concerns was to be considered. Mr. Hobbs spoke eloquently of the need to fight for the college's existence, and the board decided to continue operating the institution. He was asked to serve on the board at that meeting and served as the chairman of the board of trustees from 1918 until his tragic death in 1942. Mr. Hobbs was a guiding light as the college changed its name to Lynchburg College and moved toward becoming an accredited liberal arts institution. His relationships with the economic power structure of the city played a critical role as the young college struggled financially through the depths of the Great Depression. His belief in Josephus Hopwood's vision of the college never wavered, as reflected in his message to the student body in the late 1930s. 
Lynchburg College, with continued wise leadership, is just on the threshold of development into an institution which will, in still larger measure, build sound leadership in church and school and state, a leadership which will look for its reward in the consciousness of service rendered and a task well done. Upon his death in 1942, the Board of Trustees unanimously adopted a resolution of appreciation which named Mr. Hobbs as, quote, the college's greatest leader, unquote. Welcome back, halftime break in a crucial ODAC men's basketball game. You're watching LHSN. I am Sam Graham alongside Andrew Watson. And Andrew, let's jump right into it with these halftime stats. What jumps out? I mean, immediately you have to be questioning the rebounding numbers there on either side. I mean, Lynchburg, we're questioning kind of where those rebounds were going to be coming from. It says 22 there for Farum. I believe that is actually opposite. Lynchburg has 22. So they're doing a really good job of getting not only offensive rebounds, but just rebounds in general. And a lot of that has come just because Farum hasn't been shooting the ball as well as they've been wanting to in this first half. Well, Lynchburg also enjoying one of its hottest nights from beyond the arc through the first half of that one, 6 of 14, right around 43%. And that's thanks in large part due to Kavon James, Kuda Savage, Jordan Parham, some guys that have struggled a little bit as of late from three. Well, Kuda Savage actually picked it up in the last couple games. But, yeah, I mean, Deshaun Hicks is really all that's cooking on the other side. He's got 18, just three points away from his season average. So we're officially on season and career high watch for number zero for Farum. He's been excellent. But, again, 18 of Farum's total 29 points. He's throwing Calvin Washington. That's only five points for the quote-unquote role players for Farum. So got to find something else in the second half. And then, of course, Jordan Parham, nine points, four of six shooting and three assists. Great first half for a, a balanced first half on the Lynchburg side of things. Yeah, and, I mean, back to your point about just role players for this Farum squad, both Washington and Hicks played all 20 minutes in that first half. Never came out. So, I mean, eventually they're going to get tired. Eventually buckets are going to stop falling for him. In Washington, we saw it as soon as they realized, okay, let's double him. I mean, it just started going downhill for him on the offensive end. Yeah, and we mentioned that, you know, this is a crucial game for the ODAC standings. Lunchburg a game and a half out of the tournament field, and Farum clinches a spot with a win. But, Andrew, take us around the league a little bit, and let's check on what's going on. Yeah, so a, a couple of very interesting games. Obviously, Lynchburg at home here leads by 15 points at half. But, I mean, the number two team in the country, Randolph-Macon, they're on their home floor, and they're kind of on the ropes a little bit, up one to the visiting Averett Cougars, 6.20 left in that matchup. I mean, sitting atop the ODAC conference. But then, I mean, you look into a more of a realistic game for Lynchburg. That is very important. Shenandoah came in here. They beat Lynchburg on their home floor. Now they're back up in Shenandoah taking on Roanoke. They're down 12 with 740 remaining. It's 65-53 up there. And then finally halftime up in Bridgewater, Virginia. Bridgewater trails the visiting Washington and Lee Generals by 10. It's 34-24 at the half. But positive sign for Lynchburg if they can claw back in, kind of force that tiebreaker between Shenandoah and Lynchburg. It'll be very interesting to see what they come out with in the second half to keep it going. Number two on the ropes, D3 hoops. Upset alert is on for the Yellow Jackets. We got the second half here on Wayne Profit Court in just over three minutes. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams 
helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Lynchburg really stood out for me just because of the way it treated its students. They really do make an effort here. And I've learned that over my four years is that they actually do try to listen to what the student body wants. And they try to act on that. They don't really just give you a piece of paper here to then go off and do your own thing. They actually prepare you to like work with different populations, which is what the world is all about. It's just working with people that are different than you. They genuinely care that everyone has the ability to go off into the world and make a difference with whatever they like. Um, for me, that's just being basically in a room with someone helping them achieve their first goal of, I don't know, doing a pull-up. I actually do believe they want you to do the best you can to change someone's life for the better. You can be anyone here, which I think is really cool. But regardless of who you are here, they will make sure you don't fall through the cracks, which is awesome. I have realized that I've never felt lost here. I will not regret ever coming here, that's for sure. Um, so I'm very glad that I came here. Yeah, it's actually pretty awesome. Take a look at a few of the members of the preseason number one men's lacrosse team in the ODAC. Lynchburg, back-to-back -back champions of the league. And they're going to get their home opener. Ferrum will be making the trip back down to Lakeside Drive this Saturday. Also see swimming ODAX coming up as well. That'll be February 8th through the 11th. So getting started tonight, spanning through the weekend. And then 1 p.m., men's lacrosse gets set for year number 27 under head coach Steve Kadelka. It's been quite the career. One of the best programs in the country. Yeah, not on that list. This men's basketball team will be playing at home on their senior day on February 11th. That is Saturday at 2 o'clock against Guilford. So, I mean, another tough matchup for this basketball team. And we talked about just how difficult their schedule was. Obviously, Randolph Macon's on the schedule. Hampton Sydney's ranked. Roanoke's very good. Virginia Wesleyan, they've had their moments this year. Mary Washington, I mean, there's not really a team on this Ross on this uh, schedule, sorry, for Lynchburg that has had much of a down year, and Lynchburg has just been kind of the opposite of a beneficiary to those teams. Well, we are ready to go here, half number two. You mentioned the bench point disparity the first time these two teams met. It currently stands at 23 to two. Feels like big recipe for success. Maybe not coming from the bench for Ferrum, but. Guys not named Calvin Washington to Sean Hicks step up and start making some shots. Hicks nearly forces the open floor steal against James. Now James, another three in rhythm. Three threes for number three. Kevon James has found his stroke. Kevon James up to nine points on the night. And as soon as I said earlier about how he hasn't really seen the efficiency from him on the offensive end, I mean, obviously making me eat my words, as this team has done all year. Lynchburg drops into zone, a low trap. Pearson Young and Miles Taylor working against Abel Rivera. Now the shot will go up from Gamble. He hits the floor in the aftermath, no good. Lynchburg, 18-point lead, Fitch. Dead on three, he's got it. Two for two from deep to kick off this second half and Lynchburg has busted open its largest lead of the game. Yeah, not the dream start in this second half for Farham giving up two relatively open threes, but Hicks picking up where he left off there, getting up to 20 points on the night. I mean, Farham's gonna f have to find a way to really claw their way back into this game. Obviously, this game is important for them too to find their way into that tournament. They're not in trouble like Lynchburg is, but a couple losses because really put them on the cusp of missing it. Well, you know, we've spent a lot of the broadcast talking about, you know, who's going to step up and help Hicks? Who's going to step up, you know, and help he in Washington? Maybe Deshaun Hicks is just going to score 50, you know, be the first person to do that on this floor since they're in Suggs. It's not out of the question. That's certainly a, a winning recipe if, if he were to do so. Yeah, but not something that you'd sit down and draw up beforehand and say, all right, Hicks, I need you to go out and get me 50 tonight. I mean, 
if he puts up 50 points, they're still going to have to find something else because it's looking like Lynchburg is going to put up more than what it would be if he had 50. So definitely someone's going to have to step up. And we saw an attempt there from Washington to get back on the board. But I mean, nothing falling thus far for Ferrum in this second half. Washington's done an excellent job putting himself in position. It's just been the finishing of a lot of these shots where he's struggled a tad. Had an open look at a three. Abel Rivera passes it up, elects to go inside on the drive instead. Farum's got the lead back down to 17 for Lynchburg. Fitch, quick trigger, corner, excuse me, wing three, nailed it. Six early for Fitch in this second half. As the hot shooting continues for the team wearing white. Yeah, a lot of different guys for Lynchburg pushing that double digit number. Corner three off the mark from Odin. Taylor Hall's in the rebound. It's Taylor's going to the floor, kicks it out to the corner and Young, but a foul be called on the floor. Only four went against Farham in the first period. Picking up an early one here, 16-36 remaining in the game. Yeah, and something Farham did a really good job of in the first half, as you just mentioned, was getting not getting into foul trouble. Obviously, something we talk about every single game is for Lynchburg, if you can put the opposing team's star player on the bench with fouls, then that always goes a long way. But I mean, it does the same thing if you have Kevon James guarding one of those guys, because I mean, they're shut down just as much as if they've been sitting on the bench all game. Taylor pulls up, good look at it. He can make that shot, doesn't on this occasion. But yeah, for Farum, on the one end, it's good that you're not in foul trouble. So that shot for Hicks rattles off. But on the other hand, does that maybe reflect that you need a little bit more physicality? And then yeah, on the other hand, Lynchburg's taken quite a few threes and you're not gonna see a lot of fouls out there around the perimeter. So double-edged sword there for Farum might need to pick up some of the energy not be afraid to get into a little bit of foul trouble here in the second half. Yeah, and we talked earlier about just walking that fine line between fouling and playing just good solid defense and fair maybe just kind of leaning away from putting Lynchburg at the foul line, knowing that they shoot it relatively well from there, but definitely not working out thus far for the Panthers. Top of the key, Pearson Young working against Hicks. Spin move gets him close to the basket. Instead, he draws the foul. Man, Pearson Young, just such a tough guard. It's going to be the second on Hicks to go along with his 20 points. Incredible part about it, too, is that if you take Hicks out of the equation, Ferrum only has 13 points, yet Hicks still has three assists. So doing everything that he can for Ferrum offensively. Yeah, and I just wonder where they kind of at halftime where they said, all right, we're going to run this play, do this, to try and get some other guys some shots. Because even coming out of the break, it seems like every single possession, the ball's in the hand of Hicks. And whether it ends up with Washington trying to convert on that layup we saw earlier, I mean, good defense from Lynchburg. But still, like, coming out of the break, it seems everything is running through those two guys. Not much is really even falling into the hands of other Farron players. 0 for 2 trip at the line for Pearson Young. He's 75% on the season, so a rare trip there. And speaking of tripping, Calvin Washington heads towards the ground. Looks like foul's going to go against. No, it's going to go against Hargrove, be his second. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could have sworn that Hargrove picked up his third in the first half. Scoreboard showing two for the senior. I'm sure he would not disagree with. And maybe just a little bit of a mistake there, not entirely sure. Stats will say he only has two fouls, so maybe just a mistake from us in the first half. I guess that could happen from time to time. It's not out of the question. Good defensive possession. Lynchburg getting back on offense, looking for a fast break. Barham able to corral it. Lynchburg will have to slow down just a bit. Young works the baseline. Looked like Hargrove maybe wasn't ready 
to receive the ball there, bobbles it a bit. Allowed Gamble to set things up defensively. Excuse me, Odin. Yeah, just a little late there from Pearson Young as there's a foul called against Farum, but it looked to me like Hargrove kind of had a little bit of an advantage in the paint there, a little bit of a mismatch. Pearson Young deciding to drive and try and create an open layup for him and Hargrove unable to convert, but good defensive possession from the Hornets to respond after that turnover. That foul will be the first against Calvin Washington. We had the first six points for Farum, got things going offensively, put him back in the game after a 7-0 Lynchburg run, but it's just two for eight in the game, and it's been held scoreless since about the first five minutes of that first half. Young working against Hicks, trying to back him down, takes fadeaway jumper, bit of a settle. Hicks comes down with the rebound. Looking to push, shot blocked by Pittman. Barham gets it back and tosses it away and out of bounds. So stuck here a bit on 53-33, Lynchburg nursing that 20 point lead. Still 14-38 remaining in the game. But the last thing Farum needs right now are more unforced turnovers. Parham back in the game for Lynchburg. Swings to Fitch, who looks to work down low, but can't. Once again, Pittman forced to catch the ball well far away from the basket. And then it's Taylor trying to get that feed from Fitch. Fitch was going to say he was held by Aiden Gamble. Another foul called against Farum, second of the game on Gamble. Yeah, good job by Taylor there to just get in the right position, really force that foul. Lynchburg has done a really good job of taking advantage of those mismatches, especially on the perimeter, knocking down some open threes. But the switching action from this offense has done a really good job here tonight. Savage looking to get things going for Lynchburg offensively. Fitch thought about a three, goes inside and falling to the right, off balance jumper. Boys, Alex Fitch really found his stroke in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, up to 11 points on the night. The first Hornet to crack double digits. Definitely a welcome sight for the Hornets going forward. Pull up jumper will drop for Calvin Washington. Finally breaks that scoring drought on a personal level. Meanwhile, Savage gets in close and then how about that block? Well, momentarily a block, they're gonna call the foul, but credit to Jamar Butler getting up and altering that shot from Pittman, not just allowing him to put in the easy two. Butler standing at just 6'2 to Pittman 6'7. It's gonna take us to our first media timeout of this second half. Lynchburg still holding on to a 20 point lead at 55-35, 13-28 remaining in the game. That last make from Alex Fitch puts him over double figures, if you can believe it, the first Hornet to reach that mark. So it took until just under 14 minutes left in the game for Lynchburg, who has 55, to see an individual eclipse 10 points. And for Fitch, personally, that's the fifth time he's done so in the last six games, averaging just 6.4 points on the season. But how about 14 and a half a game over his last five? 
Yeah, Alex Fitch definitely stepping up for the Hornets late in this season, late in his career. Obviously, this being his senior year, so I mean, he understands the importance of these last couple of games in this season, and he's really showing that experience that he has for this squad. Yeah, and you know, Fitch missed a couple of games early on in the season. Just something that Coach Scott wanted to, to keep in house, but clearly kind of reforming himself and his game whatever way needed and making a strong push down the stretch here. You know, a lot of that just goes back to just how much head coach Hillary Scott trusts his guys. As Hicks gets an open three there and moves him above his season average. 23 points on the night for him. But I mean, back to what I was saying, Coach Hillary Scott has so much trust in all of his guys. I mean, you saw a couple of freshmen step in tonight and just play huge roles for this team thus far as Pittman backs down his defender. We know how comfortable he is taking those shots. And I mean, a lot of it just comes from the fact that it's such a supportive group of guys, even though the year hasn't gone how they wanted to. Oh well, yeah, and, I mean, we haven't talked about it yet to this point, but Lynchburg kind of putting on a clinic from deep so far today, but they're doing so without their top two three-point shooters and Elijah Davis and Jason Easton, both sidelined for today. Elijah Davis not in the building. So just can't, I mean, just an impressive outing really across the board offensively for Hillary Scott's squad. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of a mindset knowing that they're down a couple of guys and maybe wanting to win it for them. It's a little heat check there from Hicks, no good. Hicks with those back-to-back -back triples, excuse me, triple and then a, a two up to 25 points. Fitch trying to draw the foul there. Cannot do so. Looks like we might have gotten a technical foul against, no, excuse me, a flop going against Fitch. That will be a technical. Under the new NCAA rules, that'll send Deshaun Hicks to the line. You've heard a lot of good things and a lot of interesting things about this new rule. I think players kind of like it in the sense that, I mean, you, you're not allowed to flop anymore and you can get that technical foul for it. But a lot of the complaint has come from just maybe a little bit of inconsistency in terms of what is a flop and what isn't. I mean, obviously there's not a written rule of what that flop really is. It's almost up to the referee's discretion. So not one that you can be too angry about there, but it is very, very difficult to move a guy who's 6'5 and 190 pounds and Alex Fitch. So, I mean, if you're gonna hit him that hard, he probably was not flopping. Well, Deshaun Hicks knocks down that free throw, brings him to 26 points. Just five shy of his career high now at 31. Alex Fitch heads to the bench now. The lead for Lynchburg is 18. So for Coach Scott, giving up a technical foul there, not something you want to see. Calvin Washington follows his own miss twice. He's into double figures, pair of rebounds to go with it. So 10 and seven on the night for Washington, the lead down to 16. A quick coup to Savage miss, and farum has got a shot to get this one back under 15. Instead, it's a turnover. Conversation between officials who will ultimately rule last touched Farum ball to Lynchburg. We know from the, the previous meeting that Farum, they can score some points in a hurry. We've you know mentioned a couple of key three-point sharpshooters being out for Lynchburg. So if some of the guys on the floor now start to go cold, saw that last miss from Kuda Savage. And there's a make on the other side. From Jamar Butler, it's gonna draw the Lynchburg timeout. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden you blink and this leads down to 13. 
Yeah, and we talked about it earlier, and you just said it, how important it is to really close out on the perimeter. Because every one of those guards for Ferrum can shoot it from behind the arc very well. Hicks has 27 points on the night, but the last couple of shots, not even of his doing. I mean, maybe a little bit of too much respect trying to step out and guard him, him leaving a couple of other guys open. But, I mean, Ferrum, we saw them go on the run when they hosted Lynchburg earlier in the year to really take control of that game. And... If I'm not mistaken, I would say that 13 points on a run from that team is what they came out of the second half with when these two teams met earlier in the year. So not too much of a, a difference in terms of what Ferrum has to be feeling right now. Obviously settled into the environment in this gym with the bigger crowd and maybe just starting to feel a little bit easier. Well, and we've spoken a little bit about the missing pieces for Lynchburg. We haven't yet noted that we have not yet seen Amari Tony, sophomore guard, averaging close to 14 points a game, nor have we seen Marcus Neal, another one of those guards. So for a Ferrum bench, it's not very deep already. Might be a little more shallow here today, and that limits some of the options that they may have down the stretch here, putting a lot more of the load on Deshaun Hicks' shoulders. Yeah, only seven guys have stepped on the floor thus far for Ferrum. So, I mean, it is very difficult to kind of determine who's going to step up, especially if Lynchburg, I mean, they're not getting any curveballs thrown at them. They know who's on the court. They know how they're playing, and they've been prepared for this moment. It's the five for Lynchburg, Savage, Taylor, James, Pittman, and Parham. And for Ferrum, it's Hicks, Butler, Odin, Franklin, and Washington. Pretty much the lineup we've seen all night other than Aiden Gamble. Get the feeling Lynchburg really needs quality offensive possession this time out. They've had a couple of quick ones, not using up too much of the shot clock, maybe not getting the best shots that they could have. We'll draw one up from deep for Pittman there and you know, he, he can make those, especially if you get him one at the top of the key. That was in rhythm, but that's not necessarily his bread and butter, at least compared to, you know, close range or particularly the mid-range jumper. So might have to revisit a few of these offensive looks, try and, if nothing else, take up a little more time in the shot clock. Yeah, and to your point, I mean, he's a guy who's comfortable knocking down that shot, but at the same time, maybe a little bit out of his range in terms of what he shot today. And, I mean, there were two guys guarding him there. It wasn't like it was an open shot in rhythm. So, I mean, not, not a shot that you'd be very upset about. Obviously, it goes in. We're sitting here having a different story about how good of a shot it was. But at the same time, a contested shot, especially when you're trying to hold on to a lead in an important game like this, with a shot clock that still has 15 seconds left on it is not what you want. Maybe move the ball around. And if anything, you just take that shot with three seconds left on the shot clock as opposed to taking it early in the shot clock and just kind of wasting away that possession. And then after that, you send Calvin Washington to the line. He makes both. He's kind of picked up his scoring output recently. He's up to 12, also eight rebounds. So on the lookout for a double-double. So saw that Lynchburg lead swell to 21, about 14 minutes to go in the game. And in the last four or five minutes, it has shrunk down to 11. Farum giving its all here, forces... An empty possession there. No, we'll get another conversation from the officials. We'll see what they ultimately decide. They're going to give it to Lynchburg. Makes the men's lacrosse players in attendance happy. Yeah, you saw it there on the replay. A very close call, not one that you can really make without replay. Maybe the lacrosse team playing into that decision just a little bit. But either way, the ball, Farron will say that the ball does not lie there. Look at the ball right back after that turnover on that possession. I think Alex Fitch may be saying the same thing, a little chuckle as he runs back down the court. No arguments on that one. So now Farron down just 11, 9.42 to play. And all the momentum at the moment, as well as the game's leading score into Deshaun Hicks. Hicks feeds it out to the corner. Well, we saw Butler make one of those earlier in this half. Follows his own miss, scores in close. 
lead down to nine. That one gets a standing ovation from the Farum bench. Yeah, the first time we've seen it inside of single digits for this game in quite some time. Courtesy there of a great pass. I mean, to start out that possession from Hicks, really left to that open three, and then Lynchburg trying to get out and transition the other way, led to a disadvantage on the rebound, thus helping Farum get that bucket. Hargrove working against Washington there, draws the foul on the floor. That'll be the second against Washington. Send Hargrove back to the line, where he went two for two earlier. Hornets looking to get this lead back into double digits. Hargrove, senior from Chesterfield, Virginia, really come into his own on the defensive side of the ball in the second half of this season. Averaging right at four and a half points a game. Four for four now, pushes that lead back up to 11. So a good night at the line for Hargrove, who's making just 64 and a half percent on the year. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of fire that Lynchburg needed and a good defensive possession there from Kavon James. Hicks forcing that shot up, but Lynchburg just one bucket away from really raising the roof here. Well, they got a great look at it in close from Hargrove. James fired that pass in there. Hargrove misses on the bunny, but Taylor will draw the foul. This will finally send Lynchburg back to the line, back-to-back -back possessions. Farum had just four fouls at the half, has picked up seven through the first 11 and a half minutes of the second period. Yeah, positive sign there for the Hornets. We talk about how important it is for the team that's trailing to get to the line. Obviously the clock stops and you're able to take a shot with no one guarding you. So, I mean, for Lynchburg, it's also the same thing. However, if the clock stops, it kind of hurts them a little bit. You'd love to see long possessions and some, I mean, some good possessions in terms of getting shots off, but points, especially two points there on free throws are gonna go a long way for Lynchburg to hold on. So Pearson Young checks in for the Hornets. Alex Fitch goes two for two at the line. He's up to 13, still leading Lynchburg in the scoring department. Jordan Parham gave a good Offensive output in the first half, but he's been quiet so far in the second. Here's a good job by Fitch on the box out. Prevents Gamble from being able to go around and potentially come up with the offensive rebound there. And Ward's possession back to Lynchburg, up 13, 816 remaining. And something interesting that we've seen a little bit this year, and especially late in the year, Miles Taylor running that point guard position. Definitely a little bit oversized there and helps him against the smaller guards, especially even if they have a forward guarding him in transition, a lot helpful for Miles Taylor. Taylor at points this year has led the team in points, rebounds, assists. So had a great game against Randolph Macon, great game against Christopher Newport. Seems he always rises to the occasion on the biggest stages. Sadly, those games just haven't resulted in wins. Get a timeout here on the floor. We'll stick around. 7.55 to go in the game. Lynchburg has pushed this lead back up to 15. Hargrove able to find the bottom of the net on that last possession. May give us a chance to check in on some of these scores around the conference. Yeah, looking back at that Shenandoah game we talked about earlier, Roanoke pulled away and won that one 82 to 66. And then the update everyone's waiting for on the number two team in the country playing host to Averett. They were able to convert on a right-handed layup there right at the end of that game to lift them to a two-point victory on their home floor. Good fight from Averett, maybe something positive for them going forward. And then the final game we talked about, Washington and Lee on the road at Bridgewater. Washington and Lee up right now by eight. It's 52-44 with 10 minutes left in that game. But back to this game, I mean, Lynchburg, they kind of fell back. Farum cut that lead to less than 10 points, and it was like, uh-oh, the momentum in this building has really shifted to that one corner towards that Farum bench. But since that point, since Hillary Scott called that timeout, Lynchburg has come out, and they've really kind of controlled the tempo going down the court and just 
playing controlled in terms of trying to get the ball inside, trying to get fouled, heading to the free throw line and converting on those opportunities, just not playing into the hands of what Ferrum wants him to do, which is speed up and take those uncontrolled shots we saw earlier in the game. So every result around the conference so far tonight going Lynchburg's way, especially if that Bridgewater score holds, that's another team not too far ahead of the Hornets. And I take that back, 11 and four in conference play. The most important thing is that Lynchburg helps itself here. Lead got cut down to nine before the Hornets pushed it back up to 15. Chance to make it more on this possession. Young fumbles a bit, just has to take a quick little reset. Goes corner to Taylor, who gets two men up in the air on the pump fake. What a nifty move from Miles Taylor. As he has made his way into double figures, 10 in the game. Yeah, Lynch, Second Hornet. Sorry, Lynchburg finding a lot of points from a lot of different guys. Parham has nine, James has nine, Pittman also has nine. So, I mean, we talked about how it kind of just a bunch of different guys stepping up, and they've really shown that tonight, not having just one guy make that move, but having multiple, if not five or six guys make that move for him. Fitch gets run into on the three there, though it for a moment it looked like Gamble might have twisted his ankle or something, but it looks like he was just frustrated with himself giving up the foul beyond the arc. So Fitch heads to the line with 13. One trip to the line on the evening, went two for two. Fitch also into a double-double now. He's got 11 rebounds to pair with his 13, make that 14. It's the first double digit rebounding game and first double double of the season for Fitch. Continuing his impressive streak. And three for three on that trip to the line, lead back up to 18. What do Deshaun Hicks and the Farron Panthers have left in the tank? Yeah, and something I just want to touch on there, I'm not sure if you saw at the bottom of your screen, usually when you're playing that man defense that Lynchburg is, Kevon James not necessarily going to be right up on Hicks, especially standing on the opposite side of the court. But, I mean, you see just how important it is to stay close to him. I mean, Kevon James is putting his hand on Hicks's chest and saying, look, you're not going to get away from me. And if you do, I mean, you're not going to have an open shot because I'm going to be there the entire time. You're going to have to really force something up. And since Kevon James has really stepped up and into that role in the last couple minutes. I mean, Hicks has gone a little bit silent, trying to force a lot of Farron players to really step up, and none of them have really been able to do it. Abel Rivera at the line. Leaves that one short off the front iron, trapped down by Young, who takes a little shove out of bounds. So the foul's now piling up for Ferrum in the second half. Lynchburg into the double bonus. So it's gonna be two shots coming up for Pearson Young, who's struggled a little bit from the field tonight, one for six, just two points to his name. But he'll look to avenge a scoreless trip to the line earlier in the first half. But I do think even though he's only had two points on the night, obviously looking to extend that here, but I mean, he's done so much for this squad in terms of energy. I mean, the guy who usually gives this team the most energy, Elijah Davis, as you said, not in the building tonight. But, I mean, Pearson Young kind of stepped up into that role. And even though two points, not necessarily helping the team in, in terms of scoring. I mean, he's been all over the court in hustle plays, fighting for jump balls. I mean, trying to get steals, just really playing all around solid defense. Been a positive sign for the Hornets. 
Yeah, he's got five rebounds to go along with that as well and makes his first free throw there. So three points, five rebounds for the freshman who appears to have a bright future ahead of him on Lakeside Drive. Taylor being faced with pressure far behind the arc. Now a deep three, James found his stroke a little bit in the first half, no good on that one. Yeah, Kavon James there trying to take that three and say, obviously did not step out as much as he did on Hicks there on that last possession for Fair. Maybe trying to say, I can make that shot and defend you when you try and take it. Obviously nothing doing there for him, but Alex Fitch at the line. Good on the first as he now starting to get close to 20 points. So that's closing in on a season high for him as well. Yeah, 20 points being his season high and a, another really big win for this Hornet team in a little cross city matchup against Randolph. Really stepped up in that game and the first time we've really seen him bring that energy that we saw in that Hampton Sydney game last season back into Turner Gymnasium. So maybe fighting to break that season high and just extend it going forward. I was just about to say, I mean, yeah, you think about it. Code red game last year. He fuels a heck of a comeback in the second half of that one. Pushes Lynchburg to a win. Randolph, last Hill City rivalry for these uh, for these seniors. 20 points, season high. Pushes a team to a win. And now tonight really a, feels like a must win conference game here down the stretch. And he's getting borderline 20 points now at 18. So Alex Fitch stepping up when the team needs him and delivering in the big moments. So now Hicks at the line where he is perfect, three for three. He's near 30 in the game now. 28 after that make. Yeah, 31 being his season high. He transferred in from Livingstone College, I believe. And 31 came against Randolph. So a lot of guys having their season high against Randolph. Maybe maybe it's just this gym that really gets people going. But either way, Lynchburg out into a pretty comfortable lead. Well, with 534 remaining in the game, those two free throws do cut the Hornet lead down to 18. But we will take our final media timeout. One more break from Andrew and I, and then we will bring you right back here for the final five and a half minutes between the Panthers and the Hornets on LHSN. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school, it's about developing yourself as a person altogether. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. We welcome you back inside Turner Gymnasium. Last five and a half minutes of this one. Get you a look at the remaining schedule for the Hornets. As they come down the home stretch in ODAC play. One more home game this year. Meanwhile, in this game, not sure what that last call was. Here's it's going against Farum. Hillary Scott appeared to be a little confused about it too. He's gonna call a timeout, talk things over with his team, but 
Alex Fitch leading the way in this one with 18. Miles Taylor joins him in double figures with 10. And then it's four more Hornets needing just one bucket to crack double figures. By my recollection, most players in double figures Lynchburg has had this year are four. So you take another look at that last play. Yeah, I think what might have happened there is the defense from Farum, who was guarding, I'm not sure exactly who it was from Farum, was guarding Fitch on that sideline. And when that Farum player went up to touch the ball that Alex Fitch was holding in his hands, he was standing out of bounds. And I think that's where a lot of that confusion came from there. I'm not sure it was a foul. I just think that the guy was standing out of bounds there. I mean, giving the ball back to Lynchburg. A good time out there from Hillary Scott to try and get the ball in bounds here and just Get away from this Farum pressure. So now play resumes, 525 left in the game. A little bit of trouble getting it back across mid-court line. Lynchburg finally does, but had to make haste a little bit. Yeah, and I just want to touch now. on, uh, sorry to interrupt you there. I just want to touch on, obviously, the offense foul there from Miles Taylor. But I just want to touch on the defense tonight from Lynchburg. Obviously, being a Virginia fan, I know a lot about good defense. And Farum, a team that usually scores 74 points a game. They've only put up 56 in this one. And all of that has been because Lynchburg has really forced only one guy to kind of create for this Farum squad. And even then, he's been forcing up a lot of shots that you wouldn't necessarily want someone to take. He's 10 for 22 from the field tonight, trying to do it all himself. But Lynchburg. Just a great all-around defensive effort, especially from Kavon James and whoever is guarding Hicks. Right now, it's going to be charged as Savage. Yeah, that offensive foul going to go against Abel Rivera trying to set that screen for Hicks. Yeah, you kind of feel bad for Hicks. I mean, he you know, did his best to get his teammates involved in the first half. They were running a ton of sets for Calvin Washington. He scored the team's first six points, but... Just really nothing doing, and then Hicks kind of took it upon himself as there's a great feed from Fitch, draws a high five from Miles Taylor, and Trey Pittman finishes off the play for the third Hornet in double figures. Three-pointer credited to Johnny Franklin on the other side, his second bucket of the evening. Five points to go with five boards for the freshman guard out of Concord, North Carolina. Ball rolls out of bounds, last touched Pearson Young, or excuse me, last touched by Farum Young, the nearest to it. Lynchburg leading by 17. Trying to string together a few more offensive possessions to try and put this one on ice. There's a strong take from Pearson Young. Shot is blocked, but also a foul going against Aiden Gamble in the process. It's going to be the fourth foul of the game on Gamble. Yeah, it looks there like one of the Farum defenders trying to get up in the air and block that advance there from Pearson Young as we'll take a look at it. Looks like he might have just landed down on Young on the floor. Maybe Young might have clipped his head against the back, against the floor there. Hope he's okay. Got up relatively quick, shook it off, and he's at the line now. Overall looks pretty steady. Having a little bit of trouble at the line this evening. Did touch on those five boards for him, but one of five at the stripe, one of six from the floor. Does knock down that second one, gets him to four points. Shot is waved off there. Farum and Aiden Gamble would like that one to count. But instead, it's gonna be Hicks at the free throw line with the foul going against Young. Yeah, Pearson Young a little bit frustrated. Hasn't had the night that he normally would have in terms of stats, but I mean, like I said earlier, he's really been kind of the energy for this team at times. And 
A lot of that comes when he's gonna, into this game, he'll sit down and see, oh, well, we picked up a really big win. We're firmly back in this race to make the ODAC tournament, I think. Kind of a little bit of give and take there for Young. Yeah, with that Shenandoah loss, and if Lynchburg can hold on here up by 16, that would be a big lift for the Hornets. They would be just a half game behind Shenandoah. Of course, Shenandoah does own the tiebreaker, so that could certainly come into play, but Lynchburg can do a lot to help itself if they can close this one out. Yeah, and Lynchburg does have a bit of a tough test coming down the stretch. They'll host Guilford, who has received votes this year. Hampton Sydney, who we know is in the top 25, they'll go on the road and play them. And then they'll finish the season up in Harrisonburg, taking on Eastern Mennonite. So maybe a couple games that they could find themselves in a great spot. Well, Abel Rivera looks like he thought he was fouled. Sagged back, doesn't get back on defense. Lynchburg with all the energy and enthusiasm and the dime from Kuda Savage dumping it off for the Trey Pittman dunk. Sean Hicks knocks down another triple, his fifth of the game for Ferrum. But down 15 with 3.12 to go. It's going to take a lot more from the senior guard out of Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, already up to his career high at 34 points. It's something we've seen quite often this year. Nothing against Lynchburg, but I mean, star players have came in here and they've played very, very well. Maybe Hillary Scott saying, okay, well, we're not gonna worry about just one single guy. And that's something he talked about when we talked to him early in the season. Obviously when they faced off against Mary Washington, talking about just the skill that a couple of different players had on that roster. But he said, look, I'm not gonna focus on one player. There's no point in me wasting an entire week of practice just trying to stop one guy when there's 10, 11 other guys on a lot of these rosters that can beat you. And maybe that's the mindset they took the night. They said, all right, well, Hicks, you're gonna have to score 50. You're gonna have to score even 60 at this point to beat us because we're not gonna let any of your other guys score. And I mean, maybe maybe to the advantage of Hicks breaking his career high, he's gonna go home a little bit happy, but the team certainly is not for fair. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a great point that you make. I mean, you think about the Mary Washington game, Deshaun Cook had a great first half, cooled off a little bit in the second, but I believe that was, you know, one of the best nights of his career. You think about a VA Malong in that Easter Mennonite game, he had a career night, so. Yeah, but I mean, the, the main difference in this game versus those is that it's it's been all Hicks. I mean, yeah, Washington 12 points, eight rebounds, but it's been a pretty quiet 12 points. You know, he scored those first six in a bunch. And since then, I mean, right now, not even on the floor for Farum with three fouls. So you're okay. I mean, it's weird as it sounds giving up 34 points if you're gonna hold the entire rest of the team to just 30. Yeah, and to that point, if you're Coach Scott, you're not too happy for giving up 34 points. I don't mean to say that, but I mean, you're coming home with a win in a way that you've <laughs> played very well. And if a guy's gonna make shots like that, there's almost nothing you can do that leads cut back to 12 points. And this pressure from Farham really giving Lynchburg a little bit of trouble. Yeah, pressure something that Lynchburg has faced a good bit, especially through early January as Pittman gets himself two more. Good, really solid outing for Pittman on the offensive end. Hopefully that'll get him a little bit of confidence moving forward next couple of games. But yeah, the press at times has given the Hornets a little bit of trouble. There for a stretch, they saw a lot of it. Not really tonight until we get down to, you know, kind of the crunch time here. Farum trying to make one last push at it. But down 15, 238 to go. What does Sean Hicks have left in the tank, and will we see Calvin Washington again? You know, I think back to the point of why we haven't seen that full court pressure all day is because Ferrum's only put seven guys on the floor tonight. Not easy to play 40 minutes if you're gonna press the entire game. So you kind of win some, you lose some for him. Obviously not ecstatic about how this win, how this one has gone for Ferrum. Well, there's another three from Franklin. That is his second, so Barham getting a little bit of a boost from some of these role guys. Franklin up to eight to go with seven boards. But yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember Deshaun Hicks ever taking a seat on the bench tonight. 
you know, played 20 minutes in the first half, and I couldn't tell you a time where he wasn't on the floor. I completely agree with you. I mean, he's taken 25 shots and converted on 12 of them, half of those being from behind the arc. He's got 34 points, four assists, and three rebounds. I mean, I'm not sure what else to really say about him. It's been an all-around performance, and yet his team is still down 12 points in a game that they haven't even sniffed the lead in what I would say is about... 35, 34 minutes. Yeah, I mean, Ferrum got it to 11 to 9 early in that first half, kind of responding to the initial Lynchburg burst. But since then, did get it under 10 once in the second half. But Lynchburg's been, a, you know, done a good job keeping them at arm's length for the most part. We'll see what happens down the stretch here. But for Lynchburg, yeah, obviously, main thing you want to come away with the win for Ferrum. You're not really talking about moral victories at this point in the season, so you're kind of selling out to pick up a big conference come from behind win. For Lynchburg, you got to figure that leaves a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth if, you know, at one point you had a 21 point lead and you wind up, you know, Barham makes a game of it in the last two minutes. Well, I think at the end of the day, if they can come out and just get a solid possession here, Ferrum's going to have to start putting them at the line relatively quickly. I mean, 12 points while in theory could be four possessions in the way that this team has been shooting the ball the last couple of minutes. But I think Farum is going to draw some things from this, especially Deshaun Hicks, 37 points. I mean, they still have pretty much a way to control their destiny into the ODAC tournament. So positive things for Farum, even though they're down in this game. Pittman gets beat to the ball there by Odin, who's been scoreless, but has four boards, four assists in the game. Farum nearly forced the trap in the corner on Young. It's Savage ultimately credited with the turnover. Farum leaving it all out there in these final couple of minutes. 149 left on the clock. Ball does ultimately land with Lynchburg, but I mean, think about that three pointer drops for Farum. This leads under 10. That's kind of how close we are teetering to the Panthers potentially making this a, a game in the final 147. Yeah, and it's just because of how well they've shot the ball from behind the arc, and maybe that's not how it seems in numbers, but it seems like every time coming down the stretcher that they've needed a bucket, not just to get back into the game, but just to keep it somewhat respectable, they've gotten it. But I guess that's what happens when you have a guy that puts up 37 points. I mean, very tough to kind of leave with a happy feeling considering that I mean, yes, you were up 20 points in this game. Now you're 12, but the defense coming down the stretch on the perimeter, I talked highly about it just a couple minutes ago. They've given up 14 points since I said that. So great things for Lynchburg in this game thus far, but a couple of things to work on going forward. Yeah, I mean, Ferrum's made 10 three-pointers. I just kind of have to ignore the fact that six of them belong to, to one guy. But Fitch misses his first free throw attempt there on the second one he's eight for nine so certainly can still be happy with that performance at the stripe but now Ferrum draws the M1 opportunity and they can cut this down to just 10 and trade a one for three possession as long as Odin is able to convert at the line those were his first points of the game so now everybody that has played for Ferrum has recorded a basket Jordan Parham getting set to check back in for Lynchburg, maybe just injecting a little bit more offense. He will come in for Pittman. See if we see Pittman again or if his night will be finished. He's got 16 points to go with three boards. So once again, Barham trying to trap Pearson Young in that corner, surprising that they fed it to him down there again when that happened the last time Lynchburg was trying to get the ball in, but I guess that's better than giving up a five-second call. Yeah, I think Ferrum has done a really good job of forcing Lynchburg to inbound the ball in a couple of odd places. I mean, you don't really want to catch the ball in a corner like that, especially when you're moving towards the sideline as you catch it. And a lot of that just has to do how well Ferrum has stayed with these guys that are trying to move off the ball and get open, but 
the Panthers have done a good job to force them into some tough spots. But Lynchburg recently has done a really good job of just getting out of those tough positions. Parham looking for double figures at the line. He will do it on the first attempt. We'll also get to see Calvin Washington again as that last foul was credited to Aiden Gamble, pushes his, his excuse me, pushes him over the limit. So his night is done, three points, two rebounds. 33% from the floor as Parham leaves a little to be desired on the second attempt. Here's Hicks who does drain a deep three, but it'll be waved off. Offensive foul on the screen. It's gonna go against Washington who comes back in and immediately picks up his fourth foul. Yeah, if you're just showing Hicks, you almost have to be questioning, I mean, what else do I have to do? He said every big shot he's needed to tonight in 37 points. Would have made it 40 there if it wasn't for that foul, but I mean, a great performance, a career great performance for him. Just not a great performance from his entire squad today. Parham gets it across, just dribbling around. Therum not fouling. Looks like they will not. We're down to just a minute remaining in this game. Now Washington runs up and gives his fifth. Judging by the look on Patrick Corrigan's face, I'm not sure if that was drawn up, but Washington goes ahead and fouls himself out, 12 points and eight rebounds. Just 55 seconds left in the game. Alex Fitch at the line looking for a season high. We'll see well, EJ MacArthur for the first time today for Farron. That'll be the eighth guy they put on the floor tonight. Fitch, push, Fitch pushes the lead back out to 12, picks up his 20th point, so that will be Second time he's reached that mark in the last four. Again, fifth time in double figures in the last six. Roanoke did a good job on him, held him to three of seven from the field, one of five from three, and just seven points in that last time out. But take away that game, Fitch has been fantastic as Fitch puts the exclamation point on his evening. Nailing one from right about the logo, that will take him to 40 points, the most we have seen on this court all year. And the fifth foul will go against Odin immediately following that, so he will have to check out. So Deshaun Hicks, 40 points on 50% from the field, 50% from three, and 100% at the free throw line. Really can't ask for much more. You know, an overall great night for him. Team's still down 12, even though he has 40. We did say he might need to get to 50, but even at that point, they'd still be too short. Aram working it around, finally settles on a Franklin three from the right wing, last touch by Pearson Young. So with 18 seconds left, Lynchburg can taste the win, would be at sixth on the year. And it's third conference win. Farum content to let Kuda Savage cross the timeline, dribble this one out. And it's going to be two wins in their last three at home. It's Lynchburg trying to right the ship a bit down the stretch here and play themselves in to the 10 seed in the ODAC Conference Tournament. Yeah, I believe they just sit half a game out there now. And when you look down the schedule, they got Guilford at home and you said two out of the last three home games they found a win in. I mean, 
Guilford is a really, really good squad. However, in this environment, you never know what's going to happen and definitely is going to play into Lynchburg's advantage. And then obviously at the road, Hampton City, that on the road at Hampton City, it's going to be a very tough game. And then they finish this season against Eastern Mennonite, which we saw how good that matchup was for them earlier this far this year. So I mean, definitely positive things for Lynchburg going forward. So Deshaun Hicks, career night, 40 points, four rebounds, and four assists is not enough to push Ferrum past Lynchburg as Alex Fitch leads the way with 23 points and 11 rebounds as Lynchburg defeats Ferrum 88 to 78. Once again, I am Sam Graham alongside Andrew Watson. Want to thank our fantastic LHSN staff and a special thank you to our director, Kyle Ayers. For now, that's going to do it, and we will see you in just a few short days for a date with Guilford. Another big ODAC men's basketball game on tap for Lynchburg. <laughs>